Hey, welcome back. Okay, now, where did we leave off? And what parts have been left for us to do? Let's have a look. Well, we've got these parts here. And up to there, and down there again. Okay. Might as well get those covered now. Now, for these ones, I think it's probably going to be a good idea keeping them about the same level of lightness if not perhaps even a tiny bit lighter than the uh, main brick colour that we've been using. So, do that. Up to about there. And I'm going to take this one too. Alright, that worked out OK. Now down here, where it's a little bit muggy, I'll use these of the same colour too. And let's use the colour picker. And the paintbrush. Okay, deselect. Now this one's going to be lighter again. Like that. So I'm just going to select this, and at the minute it's at 131, so I'll make it 155. Like so. That gives it a slight sticking out part. There we go. Now this part here I'm going to apply a gradient to in just a minute. I'm just going to deselect first. I'm going to select this part. You'll notice how most of this uh, has been about how to create... Um, I'll make this 170. How to create the actual displacement map because you know the actual creation hang on the actual creation of the um diffuse map is pretty easy by comparison. There we go. Now then for this one I'm gonna have to choose two colours so first of all I'll do my select and I'm just gonna Control D to make sure I've got everything. Just use my marquee here. Good thing about additive, you see. You can uh, get some really nice complicated shapes in. There we go. Right, now for the fill, I'm going to use the gradient tool. Click here. For this section, let me see. I'm going to use the colour picker. I want that. And for this colour here, this, this colour here. Nah, actually, I don't want it clear. It should be okay. Right. Now it's just a case of clicking and dragging, like so, and deselect. Okay, now this little edge here is going to cause us a problem if I don't sort it out now. So I'll just control Z to cover up the horrible mistake I just made. Drag down here. my colour picker, paint, still a couple of areas on this where I've made some mistakes that need to be filled in, for example here and here, I'm 
down here and also down here which is why it helps when you zoomed in this is my colour picker tool again you'll notice I don't even use many shortcuts when I'm using Photoshop I hardly ever use them when I'm using Max so. got to avoid little pieces like this down here hang on see that white part there Bit too much of a selection there, hang on. There we go. It's coming on fine. As you see, we're losing the graininess as we go along as well. This part down here then, just need to kind of select it all off like so. And pick this one here. And then I'm going to change that from 131 to 1, I don't know. I want it to come go in more actually, so I'm going to make it about what 100. Yeah, why not? There we go. Now I can just use my paintbrush tool just to fill it in, or I could just use the fill tool or whatever, you know. I just like drawing because it's fun. Okay, deselect. Go over that. Pull back. Okay, and that is our displacement map basically the simplified window. Now what I'm going to do is save this as so I'm going to save as after making sure I'm still recording sudden vision of horror there. Now we had uh, tut diffuse 1 so we're going to call this tut displace 1 save and I'm going to make it a fairly large file too. Okay let's crunch down and here is our copy of 3D Studio Max. Now what I'm going to do is just go into a front view port here and I'm just going to make a plane like so. Now what I'm going to do is just go and find my image in another window and look at its size. Let's go to properties. Here we are. And uh, Okay, it's 923 by 1327, so I could make it 923 by 1327 if I want. It's just a nice shortcut because I don't have to, you know, actually this should be 932, sorry 23. And this part here should be 1327. Okay, there we go. I'm going to keep these four polygons on here. And what I'm going to do now is go to my perspective and zoom out. Press G to get rid of my grid. And move it over here. Now, I'm going to press F10 and that's going to pull up my renderer window. And for my common, under my assign renderer I've got my V-Ray mm, much love and uh, uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, press M for a material and I'm just going to use this one here which I'm going to call our window 1 because that's what it is Okay, and I'm going to change it from a standard to a V-Ray material, like so. Now my diffuse, just here, I'm going to click it. I'm going to click bitmap. And for this one, I'm going to click hmm, tut diffuse 1, which is our window here, rather than tut displace 1. These are small tests I was carrying out all the way down here, you see. So there's tut diffuse 1. And just click open. Now if I click show map in viewport and do that, you can see here is our window and I'll just press F9 and it'll just render it as fast as you like, flat wall, yeah? Okay. Now, I'll just minimise that. I'm going to drop back a bit and go down to my maps and in here I'm going to get my displace map, again a bit map and it's going to be uh, tut displace one. 
open. Now I'll go to F10, renderer, and for my edge length I'm going to make that 2 pixels, maximum subdivisions of 512, and the amount about 0.5 just to start off with. And uh, I mean this is just simple planar mapping, so let's see what happens. Well, well, would you Adam and Eve it? We now have a 3D window, tileable. So let's uh, just improve the size of that a little bit and render. So hopefully you can see what's happening here now, and you can see how it's kind of really works surprisingly well to be quite honest. I mean I can change the amount here, perhaps change it to 1 just so you can see what would happen on full strength. It makes it a lot stronger and we get a lot more stretching of the actual um, texture, the edges here to be quite honest when we do that. I mean maybe 0 0.8 might be enough. Okay, now in order to get kind of a really good idea of what this is capable of, what I'm going to do here is uh, at the minute the length is uh, sorry the width is 923 so I'm just going to change that to 9230 as you can see that's made things a teeny bit wider convert to Edible Poly UVW map got planar on already so we can change the tiling options here and I can change the tiling options to 10 like so now you can see how the stack bond is working, kind of tiling against now. I mean there's some minor things up here that would need a fix, but that's nothing too severe to be quite honest. Okay, so <coughs> and perhaps let me see. If I go into edible poly yeah, yeah, yeah. control Z and get out of this a minute. I'll also add not five floors, but let's see. Calc. I don't use my calculator a lot. Let's make three floors. So one three two seven times three. Three nine eight one. Okay, so little big window. Uh let me see. Uh actually I'll just apply the UVW map to this like so and now change this to 10 this to 3 there we are and we have three floors of these windows now press F10 will take a little bit while longer a little bit too strong now especially in relation to uh, the fact that the texture is a bit compressed down so we're going to have to change that So what I'm going to do now is uh, press F10, get my renderer, change the amount to about 0 0.4, and just to show you kind of some of the power we can do with this, I'll go to my edit poly, like so, and I can tessellate this without ruining my overall uh, mapping. Now I can go to bend. and I'm going to bend it on my x-axis about 180 degrees it's always nicer if you're doing a roundhouse style thing you see zoom in a bit and this is where you start to really appreciate the complexity of uh, the displacement mapping there we go as you see our windows all have lintels the brickwork has depth I mean we do have some areas here where the texture is a little bit stretched but I mean we can reduce the level of our actual displace a bit more if we want to but I mean you've got to admit that's pretty damn powerful really um, let's have a look if I just do one more last uh, F10 let's see uh, I think I'm in the wrong area here we are Change the amount again, maybe 0 0.2. Render. 
I mean, it's up to you really to kind of fiddle around with this as much as you need to. I mean, 0 0.2 seems pretty savvy, to be quite honest. Yeah, that's nice. Maybe that's 0 0.1 more. So I can just sit and tweak these damn things all day. There we go. As I say, it's important though that we really do a lot of work on our displays compared to the amount of work we do on our diffuse, simply because if we have any grainy kind of original textures in there and we try and use those as our displays, it's going to look real poor. And I'll kind of show you an example of that in just a minute. Firstly, though, I'm going to save this bitmap out as, uh, let me see, window render 01. Okay, uh, let me see now. I'll create a second piece to go on my front and zoom. And I'm not going to be quite as cautious or careful or whatever building this one. There you go. Zoom in on that. Go to material. Again, this can be a V-ray. Here we go, V-ray material. For the diffuse map. Let's see, I've got wall, displace, and wall diffuse. Here we are. So, wall diffuse one, wall displace. Uh, there we are. So, this is just our tidied up wall here. I'll just stick it onto there. And then if I go a bit further down, I'm going to my maps, uh, displace, bitmap. And this is our wall displace. There it is. Okay, and this is just like the easy option, as you would see it, you know, just using this really to, uh, just turning it black and white and keying out some parts. So, let's have a quick look and see what horrible things happen with this. And you can already see it's rough as hell. And the problem we've got here, you see, is that if we're just converting it to a grayscale, and even if we're applying some iterations of blur, it looks like... Well, it looks like everything's made of old, multi-layered slate. You know, and you get a reasonable basic kind of appearance from it, but there's not very much depth in this. And if we're getting close, because, you know, it's a good texture, we should be able to. You can really see now. I mean, sure, you could apply these as bump maps, by all means. And as a bump map, these would work quite well. But you really don't want this going on in your model. You know, I mean, maybe if you're making, you know, Arkham Old Town and Cthulhu's about to come a-calling, perhaps. But, you know, this is a little bit too rough and ready, especially when you compare it to our piece that we made. Although it does have its charms. Also, you'll notice everything's all skewed. And oof. If I just delete this off, let me go back to our original piece and we zoom in, because, again, we can. You'll notice I wasn't going to spend hours faffing around with that pattern piece of the second floor windows. But here we go. I mean, you can see the difference. There's depth inside the windows. And at the side here, and sure it's a little bit stretched, but you know, you can get what we're saying where it's a bit dirty. And this edge here probably needs cleaning up. But I mean, like I said, I was rushing through it. But we've got the definite depth there, and we've got a weathered building, but we don't have it looking like it's, you know, on its last legs and about to fall over next time it rains. Alright, now, I hope that you've enjoyed this section on um, displacement, well, not displacement modelling, but displacement rendering and preparation of displacement maps in Photoshop. But remember, you can do the same sort of things in the GIMP as well. It's worth looking up a fac on the uh, similarities between GIMP and Photoshop, just in case you're not sure. And um, thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.